Hi there, Steve Kaufman here. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, uh, well, I had a, an email from a person who reads my blog, The Linguist on Language, and uh, his name is Jeff, and he said, where do I stand on the relative importance of the input hypothesis, which is Krashen, and uh, something called the interaction hypothesis? Can you achieve fluency based on input alone? Um, well, I, I don't know, you know, what, I'm trying to hide that light again. I don't know what Krashen actually says on this, but to me, and I have said this before, to become fluent, you have to speak, and you have to speak a lot. You have to interact a lot. So there is no question in my mind that input alone will not take you to fluency. Uh, what I have said, though, is that input, and a great emphasis on input, has a number of tremendous advantages. It is very effective. It is inexpensive. You don't have to depend on somebody else being willing to talk to you. Uh, you can build up your capability in the language through a lot of listening and reading and vocabulary accumulation, all of which is going to make it easier for you to interact with people. But that does not mean that that's the only thing you do. Uh, you know, whenever I have the opportunity, I interact. But if I don't have that opportunity, if I'm not living in the country where the language is spoken, if I don't have friends, and if I don't want to pay for a teacher, I'm happy to spend a lot of time on input, which is what I have done with Russian. But absolutely, I know that to achieve a higher level in my spoken Russian, I have to interact. I have to talk to people. So, yeah, I mean, you can't just get there on input alone. However, uh, and this is where I had my disagreement with our friend Benny, the Irish polyglot. You don't need to speak. You don't need to speak, especially in the beginning stages. And I find that it's preferable to put most of my effort into input activity at the beginning so that even if I am speaking to people, I might speak to people for 10% of the time, but spend 90% of my time initially getting the language in me. Uh, I also believe that there is no need to worry about one's performance early or really at any time. We are not performing. We are communicating. So uh, worrying about, you know, how well we pronounce or pitch in Japanese or all these things are just unnecessary burdens. Worrying about get the, getting the grammar correct at, at early stages, these are all unnecessary burdens. It is quite sufficient to focus on input, build up your vocabulary. I mean, as an example, I'm now going back to reading Anna Karenina uh, in Russian. When I was fighting my way through it a couple of years ago on Link, there were 50% or more words that were new to me. Today I go there, I open up a chapter of Anna Karenina in Link, there's 10% new words. That includes names. That includes different forms of words that I already know. So there's relatively few words there that I don't know. Now, some of the words that I supposedly know, according to Link, that are all highlighted in yellow, I may refresh them, but basically I know them. I'm now in a situation where I can read Anna Karenina in Russian, and I know 95% of the words. So how well do I speak Russian? Not as well as I read it, or as I can understand what I listen to. If I want to get my Russian up to a higher level, I've got to surround myself with people who speak Russian. But this is difficult to do here in Vancouver. And, and uh, occasionally I'll talk to people, again, our tutors at Link, which is good. Uh, and it's particularly good for identifying uh, gaps, things that I need to work on. Uh, if I had the willpower to write more often, that's also very good. But I know that if I went to Russia for three months now, uh, I would significantly improve my Russian if I spoke to people. Uh, if I went there as a beginner, Benny style, um, I would still have to spend most of my time on input because just talking to people is not going to bring me the vocabulary that I need. 
And ultimately, and this gets back to this discussion about pitch, we had this person worrying about pitch in Japanese and he wrote something on our forum. And to me, it was obvious that he didn't have the vocabulary. He didn't have the words. So focus on getting the words and everything else is going to fall into place. So yeah, absolutely. In fact, the way I look at, at you know, the way we acquire languages, it's not something that we're putting building blocks one on top of the other and building this knowledge of the language that we study chapter one and we know everything in chapter one and then we do chapter two and we know everything in chapter two. It doesn't work that way. It's, I've described it as walking in the fog and the fog is slowly dissipating or it's like a jigsaw puzzle and the more of the pieces of the puzzle that come together, the more other things start to become clear. And it's not obvious when these different pieces of the puzzle are going to come together. So we just continue and we speak and we listen and we read and we do things and, and we get interested in different things at different times. Uh, I now find that I'm much better able to focus on the cases of Russian because I have so much vocabulary and I've read the explanations a few times and I've tried to focus on the tense on the case endings a few times and I've reviewed the tables a few times and slowly 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 these things start to come together and so I am more and more uh, keen to use the language uh, so I'm ready for it so what you want to do at different times what you're ready to do at different times it's all going to vary as the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle come together. And certainly a big part of achieving genuine fluency is speaking and speaking a lot. Like we're in, you're in a situation, say you go to the country or you're with people and you're talking for hours in the language. Now, in order to talk for hours in the language, you have to have a lot of vocabulary. And that doesn't come from just talking to people. That comes from listening and reading. So. I guess in conclusion, I think that input is tremendously powerful in that it's easy to do on our iPods, reading books, it's inexpensive, it's, it's enriching, it's developing our potential. But in order to finally realize that potential, you definitely need to start to interact, to write and speak, and you need to write and speak a lot, okay? So if the question is, is it the input hypothesis or the interaction hypothesis, I would say at the end of the day, it's the interaction hypothesis. But for a long period in the initial stage, it's the input approach. And more than anything else, it's the enjoyment hypothesis. People should do what they like to do and not get impatient, not get frustrated, not put unnecessary uh, pressure on themselves, worrying about pitch and things like that. Just enjoy the language, enjoy communicating, and as you feel more and more confident, uh, get out there and interact with people. So I hope that answers Jeff's question, and it was a good excuse to do a video here. Bye for now.